Hello people, it's uh, Thursday here. Um, I'm just here to do a kind of like a brief video. It's probably like 20 minutes, no longer than 20 minutes. Um, I have uh, two messages coming from one from Servant's Heart, Betty Stevens, uh, Servant's Heart, and then also from Susanna Noel. Uh, she's talking about the uh, plagues coming, this other plague, uh, uh, beyond, uh, bubonic plague or whatever coming. Uh, and we have fires and storms going galore all over the place. So I'm just going to show those to you guys. That's all I'm going to talk about. So um, my fair use notice is up. Um, and I'm just going to talk about these uh, few items. Not going to get into a long video today. So uh, I'm going to go here now and go to the news over here. Oregon wildfires destroy five towns as three fatalities, I can't even speak, talk here, uh, confirmed in California. So California is really horrible. This is what Betty Stevens is talking about, California, a message for California, a message for Ohio. So I'm going to be showing that, but right now I will play this and I will get on into the other videos real quickly. Let me see what I need to see. Oh, yeah, okay, I got, yeah, I'm talking about the tropical uh, storms coming. Six disturbances right now being monitored, people, in the sea. Oh, man, that is really a lot of storms. So I'm going to be covering those things as well. So let me go ahead and do this real quick uh, from Oregon. Then I'm just going to let these things rip, okay, rip through here. Uh, I just barely got up. I'm not even yet yeah, dressed that much here, but anyway, but I'm just going to go ahead and go ahead and show it to you. So let me go ahead and mute it out. Okay. All towns and the Skies pulsed orange as wildfires along the U.S. west coast in Oregon raised five small towns and the state governor fears a record number of deaths. Firefighters had their work cut out for them battling at least 35 major blazes across an area twice the size of New York City fanned by winds of up to 50 miles per hour. In Oregon, the community of Detroit as well as Blue River and Vida in coastal Lane County Phoenix and Talent in southern Oregon were substantially destroyed. Governor Kate Brown spoke to reporters on Wednesday. This could be the greatest loss of human lives and property due to wildfire in our state's history. In California, officials said 64,000 people had been evacuated from their homes and 28 major fires raged across the most populous U.S. state. Survival stories have also emerged from the fires overnight. Governor Brown spoke of rescuers in Oregon saving people by pulling them from rivers where they took refuge from the flames. Other more tragic reports from local media reported the death of a 12-year-old boy and his grandmother in a wildfire near Lyons, south of Portland. And police reported a one-year-old boy was killed with his parents severely burned fleeing a fire in northern Washington state. 17 new large blazes were reported in the west on Wednesday, bringing the total to 96. More than 3.4 million acres, an area nearly the size of the U.S. state of Connecticut, has burned. Not one, not two, or even three, but six, count them, six tropical disturbances in the Atlantic this September 10th. The statistical peak of hurricane season, including tropical storms Paulette and Renee. We're live on track in the tropics on this busy September day with what you need to know about here in the United States. Hey there, everybody. J.B. Buno here with you live in your hurricane headquarters, being joined again by Track in the Tropics meteorologist Amanda Holly, and joining us from WKRG News 5 in Mobile, Alabama, 
formerly a WFLA chief meteorologist Ed Bloodsworth joining us in the bottom right hand portion of your screen. We're going to be taking your questions on Facebook Live and a meteorologist Q&A about these six systems, what you need to know about. You can use the hashtags on your screen, hashtag AJB, hey hashtag hey Amanda, hashtag hey Ed to ask us a question in the Facebook Live comment section. But I want to begin everybody with Amanda Holly here again, breaking down a very hectic map here. Uh, IR satellite jam packed with Paulette, Renee, and a whole lot more, Amanda. Yeah, so we're tracking two actual systems that are named. That would be Paulette and Renee. Those are not new. We've been tracking those for several days now since the beginning of the work week. Uh, but the National Hurricane Center also tracking multiple tropical waves that have chances for development. And then that area of low pressure that you see, the, the northernmost low pressure, that's off the coast of the Carolinas. We talked about that yesterday yesterday. The National Hurricane Center just dropped that one basically from their watch list. So we were at seven just a few minutes ago and they dropped that one. So now we're down to six, which is still a lot of systems out there in the Atlantic. So we'll talk about each one. Paulette, of course, maximum winds at 50 miles per hour. And we're also tracking Renee, which is just next to Paulette. And they're both kind of going to make this same general movement off to the west, northwest, and then they're going to be recurving out to sea. Renee also has maximum winds there of 50 miles per hour. And you can see the tracks. They're going to look very identical. They're going to kind of follow each other. And then both of them are going to kind of recurve back to the north. Again, these not really a threat to the United States. Bermuda, though, may be impacted by a Category 1 Paulette. Both of them are now forecast to become a Category 1 hurricane. So those are going to continue to churn out in the Atlantic. And forecast models are in pretty good agreement that those are going to stay out to sea in what we call fish storms. Now, they are going to kind of pave the way for several more tropical waves that are coming in off the coast of Africa. And what that means is these two waves right here, the red blob, that is some showers and thunderstorms that have a very good chance of developing. It emerged off the coast today. It is currently doing so, and it's pretty much going to get its act together right away. You can see that in the next five days, it has a 90% chance of developing into something tropical. And that's the system that we are, are going to be watching for, for a stronger system and potentially to make its way closer to the United States. It's a long ways off though. Closer to home, we're tracking also a couple of tropical waves, one off the west coast of Florida and then another one that is currently situated over the Bahamas. Now, the one off the west coast of Florida is going to continue to move west in the Gulf of Mexico. That one has a 20% chance of developing over the next five days. The area of showers and thunderstorms that you see over the Bahamas, that's that yellow X over the Bahamas, that one actually now has a 40% chance of developing but not until it gets into the Gulf of Mexico. So that's a tropical wave that is currently producing those showers and thunderstorms. So I've kind of taken off the yellow areas there for you. And they are both going to make their way west. And the areas of showers and thunderstorms that are over the Bahamas will make their way over the peninsula of Florida and then into the Gulf. And that's when it has a chance to develop. And this is exactly when I'm going to bring in Ed because you guys are going to be impacted by at least this area of showers and thunderstorms, whether it becomes a named tropical system or not. We're already seeing showers and thunderstorms from both of these systems. There's a lot of tropical moisture associated with it. Our rain chances are high here in the Tampa Bay area. And Ed, I'm sure you're increasing those rain chances in your area as well. Yeah, for early next week, as the system begins to move into the Gulf of Mexico, some of the global models are starting to develop a weak area of low pressure, having this hold together after it passes over the uh, Florida Peninsula. And then again, at the very least, uh, you would assume with more of an onshore flow for parts of the Gulf Coast, and we're talking, you know, even the west coast of Florida, the Florida Panhandle, lower Alabama, Mississippi, and eventually towards coastal Louisiana, uh, that area will be seeing long range, some elevated rain chances at the very least. Again, still up in the air as to exactly whether this system will be getting its act together in any significant way. But again, at least some of the models are showing that. And again, you can see that uh, area of teal. I'm glad you pulled that up. The, just the high moisture content coming in through the weekend and early next week. Uh, so we're going to be looking at, at least from our part of the Gulf Coast, you know, rain chances, maybe 60, 70 percent rain, just a very healthy coverage of showers and storms next week. And that could lead to some uh, minor flood threats if we get any of those training thunderstorms, as we often see this time of year. So I want to bring I want to bring Amanda back in here, everybody, because one of the things, of course, that we're starting to see in social media. And again, as a reminder, we're going to look for your comments in our meteorologist Q&A coming up here in a few minutes. Use the hashtag AJB. 
me, hashtag hey Amanda, hashtag hey Ed, and you can ask a question to one of our meteorologists here. That's going to be in a couple of minutes, but you can start submitting your questions now with those hashtags. But Amanda, which one of these systems poses the most risk or which one of these systems has the highest chance of becoming a hurricane? So I'm not incredibly concerned about the systems that are on either side of the Florida Peninsula right now. They don't really look, none of the models at this point develop them into anything strong. At this point, we're just talking about those elevated rain chances. What you see right there on your screen, all of that blue, that's a lot of tropical moisture that's really going to help to spark those showers and thunderstorms. Now, if you look next to my head, basically, just next to Bermuda there, you see that circle of blue. That is is Paulette. That one is going to likely develop into a, a more mature storm here over the next few days. And this goes all the way through next week. And I've kind of zoomed it out there. And now your, your eyes should be focused in the Caribbean, just south of the Dominican Republic and Hispaniola. There's that darker area of blue right there. That's the invest that is coming off the coast of Africa. This is just one model, and models are all over the place with this system. Uh, we, we really don't have a good idea of where this one is going to go, but I will say this is one that we're going to have to watch, and this one will likely become a hurricane regardless of where it goes. If it recurves off to sea, out to sea like Paula and Renee, or if it continues toward the Caribbean. We're going to watch it, but it will likely become a pretty strong storm. This is Susanna. I greet all of you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Can you please go with me to Matthew chapter 24, verse 7? For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquake in diverse places. So I am here today um, to discuss about the Black Death Plague, or the Bubonic Plague, or the Bible simply calls it blames or pestles. So on um, November the 21st, 2019, and on February the 2nd, 2020, the Lord gave me, showed me the number 76. And I looked up to the number 76, and in Hebrew, 76 means blames or inflammatory pastels. And the scripture that came with that is Exodus chapter 9, verse 9 to 10. So please let's go there. So Exodus chapter um, 9, verse 9 says, And it shall become small dust in all the land of Egypt, and shall be a boil breaking forth with blains upon man and upon beasts throughout all the land of Egypt. And they took ashes of the furnace and stood before Pharaoh and Moses sprinkled it up towards heaven and it became a boil breaking forth with blains upon man and upon beast. Okay, so after the Lord gave me those numbers in 2019, um, in January and February of this year, he gave me two dreams about the Black Death, the bubonic Plague, or the Blames. I had a family member in the dream that became very ill, and I saw on their body inflamed swelling and sores. Uh, they were, the sores and the swelling were very, very painful. And that family member developed fever. And parts of the swelling became black. And um, right after that dream, the Lord gave me another dream where I was also infected with the black death or the blains. And on my face, there was swelling and I had great pain and fever. 
So my brothers and sisters, what is what is the bubonic plague or black death? Um, it is a potentially lethal infectious disease that is caused by a bacteria, my brothers and sisters, and it is called Yersinia pestis, and that lives in some animals, mainly rodents, uh, for example, rats, and the rats have fleas, and if the fleas do bite you, there is a possibility that you can contract the bubonic plague, the blames, or the black death. It kills someone by cutting off a cell's ability to communicate with one with other immune system cells needed to fight off the bacterial invasion. Um, examples um, is fever and chills, um, extreme weakness, abdominal pains, diarrhea and vomiting, and at the last part, gangrene sets in um, at the ends of your fingernails or at your toes becomes totally black because of lack of, of no circulation is there and gangrene um, occurs. So my brothers and sisters, this is a very serious warning because the Lord had given it to me um, since uh, the 21st of November, 2019. And I did remember that I, pl I, I put out a video, um, I think it was approximately four to five or even six months ago, I put out a video um, warning that the blames was um, going to return, but I did not go into deep details like I'm going into deep details now. And um, so I'm letting you know that the Black Death Plague or the bubonic plague is going to return very soon. Um, I would not be surprised if that is already here, my brothers and sisters, because um, it's uh, almost a year ago that the Lord had uh, given me uh, the first um, number in regards to the bubonic plague. So I would not be surprised if it is already here. It is just a matter of time before um, it starts an epidemic. So my brothers and sisters, please pray about this and, and seek your own confirmation on this. Um, but I know this is, is four times the Lord um, told me about this and Anytime the Lord give me something more than one time, I know he wants me to share it. So my brothers and sisters, you know, may God bless all of us and stay safe. Bye-bye. Hello, everyone. Today is Thursday, September 10th, 2020, and I'm here to make the third part of the last of the videos. Um, it's been very difficult. I want to try to get it, but there's so many things going on. So I came up here up to do what I got to do. As I told you earlier, we are staying temporarily um, with another couple who has been very sweet to us. And we're hoping to get where we need to be soon. I'm hoping. <laughs> so anyway. That's beside the point. This is the third part. I'm going to give it to you, and I'm going to say there's some other things that I want to give you. This third part is called, and this is the title the Lord gave me, Thus saith the Lord, repentance is not obsolete. In other words, you cannot replace it, or is it an option? Thus saith the Lord, repentance is not obsolete. Okay, here begins the word. Second wave, second wave. Boom, boom. Hell opens up its mouth to devour. Sound, second wave, second wave. Sound wave, sound wave. Death. Destruction. Pandemic. Master lock. Those are the first words I was given. California. California, Death Valley, flames of hell will come to you, and you will wish for death. Mutant armies will come to consume you. War is on both sides of America, on their shorts, 
particularly California. The second pandemic, pandemic wave will be much, much worse. Cannot emphasize that enough. The furnace of many, many afflictions. There will be death on the streets, death in your homes, shootings of mag magnitude. Blood will drip in this nation. Times, times, times are in my hand, saith the Lord. Permanency. A permanent lockdown will occur. Within this lockdown, will families be taken out of their homes? I believe they started it early. Satan is on a rampage. Understand that now to move things ahead. Military will not hesitate to break down doors, break out windows, shoot without advance notice. And when any officer or leader talks about camps, they are speaking about FEMA camps. That is Federal Emergency Management Agency, and you will not come out. There will also be deals that have been wagered and then broken, laws wrote down and used against the people, orders of mass destruction will be given. That was the end of this word from the Lord. There was no visions that was boom, boom, boom. Very firm. This is the words. This is the words. This is the words. This is where we are right now. Things are moving quickly because the enemy is moving it fast. God brings in the times of judgment at his will and in his way. And they will not be broken. I am not here to give you a pity party or to give you a wonderful speech of peace, peace. I would advise you to, wear, to read Jeremy 8. That is one of the scriptures the Lord has given me, all the chapter. Now, quickly, quickly, I must move on, quickly. Following this was a word from the Lord in our conversation together the same day. America, time's up. The downfall of America will be of its own demise. Power of America will be taken. The carnal, carnal church will be shattered in pieces, but those that truly know me will rise to the occasion, fearless, bold, and refreshed. Knowing the cause, bringing in souls, and once more, I will be their God, and you will be my people. And that is the end of that one for part three. Now I'm going to go on. This early morning, I've been having some dreams, some words, and some more. I'm going to tell you right now, California, you are in, as I said earlier, Death Valley. You need to repent right now. Those of you that want God to bring you out and bring you into safety or secure you where you are, repent, O oh, ye nation, repent, for the day of the Lord is at hand. Ohio, I have a message for you. The Lord says, I know what your government has done. I know what the governors are saying. They are lying to you. They are bringing in false reports. They are also moving ahead quickly to put all those and anyone that exposes them or anyone that has the symptoms of COVID in a camp. You will not come out when you are put in a camp. Oh, Ohio, you are moving forward. You will be you will be chastised and you will receive the judgments, do you? Now, with all that being said, I want to say this. Right now, I've had people ask me. I made mention of this in one of my earlier videos here. I didn't do a whole video. I just did, I did a mention. In this second wave, pandemic soon, boils are going to be a part of what judgment? It's going to be a part of judgment that God allows. Boils, significant boils. And this vaccine that they are talking about, I saw it down in Antarctica. 
and it is now coming up into different parts. China, the USA, all these different, California, all the states are in on it. And your government, your governors are going to eventually, if they haven't already, they're going to come together and they're going to sign papers against their state. I don't want to get too harsh here, but I'm warning by the Lord Jesus Christ that this pandemic is around the corner. God's judgments are just and they are appointed time. I don't care what anything, what, what anyone else is saying. These days or not, God's judgments are appointed, he said. That is what he remitted to me. And I'm going to tell you, those that need to be where they need to be had better go quickly. We're going to have a scavenger hunt on Christians by the time we enter into 2021 as we get into it. A scavenger hunt of dead bodies. We're going to have a pandemic that will lock down everybody and every nation. And if you're not prepared, if you're not out of where, at whatever state, city, if you are being called, you better find out where you can stay and you better know that it is from the Lord and who you will be with. You cannot just go. God is not going to send people somewhere where they're not with others. Never will, never will. People that go off on their own, you are easy targets for the enemy. You need to be praying. I cannot stress this enough. I'm not going to go into some of the things that I saw. I'm just going to tell you now. We are going to, we are going to see and be here for one of the most horrific and horrendous pandemics the world has ever seen. And they are moving it quickly forward. Satan is moving things so fast. But I, God still has his hand on the pulse of things. I can only, only warn you, bloodshed is around the corner. There's going to be much, much chaos around election time, and I am only told to say this. Things are not all going to go the way people are saying that they are going to go, be it a, be an election or not an election. God is going to shake things up, and it's not all going to be to the good. God is going to shake people up until they get where they are, need to be. God is going to shake up households more than ever before. God is going to send his people, his prophets, his messengers to shake up areas, to shake up, and Satan knows this. We need to be using our prayer language and we need to be doing warfare every day. That is one of the things that God said we must do, warfare. And so I'm going to leave it at that, but Ohio... You are on the number one list because you're heading and you're doing things and you're releasing things and lying to the people in that state. California, you're almost like a dead horse in the water already for what you have done. And some of the other states that are going to come behind them, there's going to be states that you wouldn't think this would happen to. They're going to follow just like sheep. So all I'm going to tell you right now is you don't have much longer. Things are going to come right on out and God is going to shake up this nation. Things are going to happen in more intense measures. Intense. Woe be to you people that will not submit to God. And woe be to the church of Laodicea. Get your house in order. Amen. Shalom. Thank you for watching. I have to go. We've got to get things in order. Prayer requests. We are praying for all of you. If I don't answer you by email, it is because I'm on a time frame. I can't say anything else. So until the next time, thank you. God bless you. Okay, I got to talk now. I got to talk now. I know it's 28 minutes. I'm going to take another extra few minutes here. Just a few minutes, people. 
I'm going to go into the Apocrypha again. Okay. I read this stuff on my last channel. Uh, I'm not, I mean, not on last channel. <laughs> I mean, about uh, four videos ago or five videos ago. I can't remember how many. But I did go to the Apocrypha and read to you guys. So I'm going to just have this in front of you. Just look at while I read it. But the trumpets are going to sound. I don't know when, people. We can get so very close. I've heard so many people uh, es explanations, uh, uh, other people opinions, uh, other people studies on the trumpets, uh, you know, Feast of Trumpets. And I heard Day of Atonement following into Day of Atonement. It can happen. I don't know when. I just know he said to watch and pray. And so I'm going to go here to Edras, uh, 16th chapter that I read on one of the videos already, two whole chapters of it. But I'm going to read just a few verses here. I'm going to start from the 22nd verse to the 54th verse where he's talking about the same things that you're hearing right now from uh, Suanna, Suanna, Susanna, Susanna, and from Betty Stevens, okay? And so we need to be knowing that we are in the end at the end. And it says here in 2nd Ezra 16th chapter, 22 verse, it says here, for many of them that dwell upon earth shall perish of famine, perish of famine, and the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy, and the dead shall be cast out as dung, and there shall be no man to comfort them, for the earth shall be wasted, and the cities shall be cast down. There shall be no man left to till the earth and to soar it. The trees shall give fruit, and who shall gather them? The grapes shall ripen, and who shall tread them? For all places shall be desolate of men, desolate of men, so that one man shall desire to see another and to hear his voice, but of a, for of a city there shall be ten left, and two of the field which shall hide themselves in the thick groves and in the clefts of the rocks, as in an orchard of olives upon every tree, there are left three or four olives. Oh, as when a vine, or when a vineyard is gathered, there are left some clusters of them that diligently seek through the vineyard. Even so, in those days, there shall be three or four left by them that search their homes. You hear what she said about they're going to come in your homes. It's right here in the word of apocrypha. Uh, so it says here, even so in those days, there shall be three or four left by them that search their houses with the sword and the earth shall be laid waste and the fields thereof shall wax old and their ways and their, and all her paths shall grow full of thorns because no man shall travel there through. The virgin shall mourn having no bridegrooms the women shall mourn having no husbands. Their daughters shall mourn having no heifers. In the wars shall their bridegrooms be destroyed, and their husbands shall perish of famine. Hear now these things and understand them, you servants of the Lord. Behold the word of the Lord, receive it. Be believe not the gods of whom the Lord spake. Behold the plagues, listen, the plagues draw nigh and are not slack. As when a woman with child in the ninth month bringeth forth her son within two or three hours of her birth, great pains come past her wound, which pains when the child cometh forth, they slack not a moment. Even so shall not the plagues be slack to come upon the earth, and the world shall mourn, and sorrows shall come upon it on every side. O oh, my people, hear my word, make you ready to the battle, and in those evils be even as pilgrims upon the earth. He that selleth, let him be as he that fleeth away, and he that buyeth as one sh will lose. He that occupieth merchandise, as he that hath no profit by it, and he that buildeth, as he that shall not dwell therein. He that soweth, 
He always said they're going to build houses, but they won't be able to live in them. It's in the Bible too. Uh, he that occupies merchandise and as he have no profit by it, and he that buildeth as he that shall not dwell therein. I guess that takes away all that. Let us rebuild. Let us rebuild. Okay. He that soweth as if he would, he that soweth as if he should not reap. So also he that planteth the vineyard as he that shall not gather the grapes that they that marry as they that shall get no children and they that marry not as the widowers and therefore they that labor labor in vain for strangers shall reap their fruits and spoil their goods overthrow their houses and take their children captives for in captivity and famine shall they get children and they that occupy their merchandise with robbery, the more they deck their cities, their houses, their possessions, and their own <clears throat> and their own persons, the more will I be angry with them for their sin, saith the Lord, like as a whore envious, a right, honest, and virtuous woman, so shall righteousness hate iniquity when she decketh herself and shall accuse her to her face when he cometh that shall defend him that diligently <clears throat> searches out every sin upon earth. Do you understand? Every sin upon earth. And it goes on. I'm going to end this now. And therefore be ye not like the there and to, not to the works thereof. For yet a little and iniquity shall be taken away out of the earth and righteousness shall reign among you. Let not the sinner say that he hath not sinned. Do you get that, people? Let not the sinner say that he have not sinned, for God shall burn coals of fire upon his head, which saith before the Lord God and his glory, I have not sinned. Behold, the Lord knoweth all the works of men, their imaginations, their thoughts, and their hearts. And I'm going to end there. But people, 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 it's time to get ready. As Betty said already, it's time to use your spiritual warfare prayers day and night. I do it day and night here for many years uh, as I do over you guys, over myself, over my families. But I'm going to go ahead and end this video right now. I don't want it to be a long video. So uh, <clears throat> I just want to go here real quickly uh, and end it right now, people. I got to end it right now. So, uh... I'm just going to thank you guys for all the offerings to help the homeless, the offerings, the widows, those in need of mission fields. May Yahuwah richly bless each and every one of you guys. I really appreciate the donations coming in, especially now at uh, this time of the season when people are outside in the cold. Uh, so thank you so much for it. Uh, you can go to our donation website at fmcmi.org or go to marlin.camera at gmail.com, PayPal. Uh, you can mail in your donations to Fill My Cup Ministries, Post Office Box 414, Canyon City, Colorado, 81215. Uh, you can go to uh, ship things to us from Fill My Cup Ministries, 1501 Main Street, number 414, Canyon City, Colorado, 81212. Uh, so I'm going to just go ahead and end this video now with prayer, a spiritual warfare prayer. Father, this day, each and every day to come, I bind Satan, the ruler of spirit, every principality power, ruler of darkness, wicked spirits in high places, all spirits not of the Holy Spirit, and all ways, man, and form, and all they see, as they works, they plans, the activities directed at my husband, myself, our children, our grandchildren, all the people on our channel, all the ministries, all the missionaries around the world, uh, this prayer is for them. I bind and loose us all, Father, permanently from these things. I speak a curse and destruction upon all their seedings, all their works, all their plans, all their activities, all their blueprints, all their plots, all their plans, all their designs, all their traps, all their wiles, all their snares and assignments against us, against me, in any way, manner, or form, to or through any individual, any organization, adversary, would be adversary, from this day, any day past, any day to come, I bind permanently, loose us permanently from, uproot all those seedings, works, plans, activities. I curse them at their roots by trust and faith. Call them canceled, nullified, never come to pass, rendered to no effect. All in the mighty name of Yahushua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. And Father, I ask that you be with all the people watching today, supplying all their needs, whether it's physical, mentally, spiritually. Uh, we know you coming quickly. Come, let you come quickly. Holly, come quickly. Come quickly, Father. Come quickly. We know the world is in a mess. It's in a mess, my God. They have the, they have the, 
that they have rebuked you. They have gone against you. They have defiled you. They have just walked away from you. Oh, Father, they have rejected you. Oh, my God, help us, Father. Help us to return to you, return to you, return to you. Also, I just love you, Father. We thank you so much for your love for us, your care for us. So I'm just going to say uh, we bless your holy name. We lift you up. And I ask that you people will go and repent today and give your life and your heart to the Savior, Yeshua Messiah, because he is going to come quickly. The trumpet can sound any time. We don't know. Soon it's getting close to the Feast of Trumpets. I don't know if it's going to be this year, but we know it can happen anytime. You can die in your sleep at night, so you need to be ready. Tomorrow is not promised. Tomorrow is not promised. So we need to be praying for one another, praying for each other. Uh, so I'm going to go now. I just wanted to come here and share this video. Please pray for this nation. Pray for Israel. Pray for Africa. Africa is in the Congo. The people are lined up on the streets, dying from famine, from uh, uh, diseases and everything you can imagine happening. Massive people. I was looking at an article yesterday. All over the world, we are going through these turmoils, uh, these tragedies, uh, uh, all these things and pestilence and plagues and all these things are going to be at the door very, very soon. So I'm going to go now and you guys have a wonderful, wonderful uh, Thursday and I'll see you on another video. Shalom, shalom. This video is 40 minutes. Okay. So you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. Shalom, shalom. I love you guys so much. Shalom.